Two weeks ago, I posted a tweet where we were talking about a potential pre-halving retrace, and we saw one occur, 18% equaling the 2020 pre-halving retrace as well. So today we're going to be talking about, is this pre-halving retrace over? Let's dive right into it. Subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Like this video if you enjoy content like this going forward, and let's dive right into it. So we have seen that a pre-halving retrace occurred since this tweet falling 18% and now reversing back to 70k and this is now a question of is this pre-halving retrace over because historically we tend to see retraces before the halving 28 days before the halving and we saw that take place also in 2016 but also in 2020 in 2020 we actually saw a 20 percent almost 20 percent retrace occur 14 days before the halving so in this case here we saw this pre-halving retrace repeat 2016 tendencies in the sense that 28 days before the halving we saw a pullback and we were talking about where could this pullback take us? Because historically, over the past year and a half or so, since the bear market bottom, we saw four retraces, 23, 21, 22, and 21%. And this is the chart that I was talking about in March 18th. These are the retraces that we saw across time, 23% to 20%, 22, 21 and a half, and this was 12% at the time. And not only talking about those retracements, but also talking about how we have to think about two key takeaways. The closer Bitcoin got to 20% retrace, the better the opportunity it was. And retraces need time to fully mature, at least two to three weeks, at most two months. And this was at a time where essentially we saw in the past three week retraces, 63, 63 days, 14 days, and you can see here that this was a just under 14 day retrace and 18%, getting us close to that average of 20 to 22% retracements in this cycle. So we were on the shorter end in terms of time because historically we saw pullbacks of 14 days to 63 days, definitely on the shorter end of that. And when it comes to 18%, narrowly missing the 20 to 22 percent retracement but this is all important in terms of setting up this reaccumulation range at these highs because historically we tend to see bitcoin develop lots of volatility towards the upside downside around its old all-time high region very rarely is it the case where 2013 is repeated where we just see price expansion towards the upside you saw 2017 see lots of upside volatility and downside volatility. Here we saw just reaccumulation below the old all time highs here at this black level. And once again, this old all time high 69K prompted a 18% retrace, getting us into that pre halving retrace. But now we're seeing a return to 70K. And it's all about staying above this black 69k region of old all-time highs to progress into its first wave beyond in price discovery because once we clear this reaccumulation range here we rally into price discovery that first wave that first fantastic uptrend takes place and the question is are we ready for that first wave is this reaccumulation area over and you can see that this is really what needs to occur reclaiming of that old all-time high before springboarding into the first wave of that uptrend. So we are on the cusp of potentially ending this reaccumulation period around old all-time highs. And the question is, is this pre-halving retrace over? And that answer was a bit alluded to just a moment ago, but it's all about reclaiming this old all-time high as a new support right over here. And you can see Bitcoin is peaking just beyond this 69K region. So turning this level into support would enable price to simply try and go for that breakout to new all time highs and into that first wave of price discovery, something we talk about in the newsletter. So this is now peaking beyond this old all time high positioning itself potentially for this pre-halving retrace to be confirmed to be over. And what this is actually reminding me of is this downside wick right over here, this 18% downside wick, as you can see from last week, very similar to this fake out that we saw from this reaccumulation range here. 
downside deviation here. Look at how we see a downside wick also here. I'll zoom this in because we see downside wicking below the range low essentially. Downside wicking below the range low as well, as well right over here. So if we think about this as a range, a range, a reaccumulation range, you can see once again this downside wicking beyond this point. And if we do reclaim 69 as support, that means that this reaccumulation range high has been broken, has been turned from old resistance into new support, and that means that we're ready to break out from this reaccumulation range. And we see loads of reaccumulation ranges develop across the cycle. It starts with a reaccumulation and the accumulation range here, reaccumulation, 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 and once again here, reaccumulation. So are we ready to break out from that reaccumulation structure that we are seemingly developing, but at the same time, seemingly breaking out from it? So if we're able to really nicely reclaim 69k, that could mean that we're actually going to see further upside going forward. However, if we form some sort of upside wick just like this, and if you see upside wicks beyond the range high, upside wicks beyond the range high, even beyond the accumulation range here, and upside wicks beyond this range high here, reaccumulation ranges form both downside wicks and upside wicks faking everybody out towards the upside, panic sellers to the downside, and FOMO buyers towards the upside. So if we're not able to reclaim 69k as a support, then we're going to consolidate here continuously, maybe even providing us a bit more downside, but still maintaining this range, providing us that downside via downside wicks. However, what we need to mention here is that per reaccumulation range here, we only ever see one capitulation event, essentially. Whether it's a long capitulation event, we only see one of those, and you can see that here as well, one long capitulation event, which gives us some insight that this is the bottom of that pre having retrace, but at the same time, we have to note that we could potentially see downside wicking, shorter versions of those downside wicks, like so as well, if we are to see a reaccumulation range develop here at these highs. So these downside wicks would be shorter. We could see sinusoidal price action going just sideways here, upside wicking a bit here, uh, downside wicking below this range low, but essentially reaccumulating here. And so this would give us another reaccumulation range as we've been seeing over the course of the cycle. But taking us into what is essentially that post halving reaccumulation range. If we see reaccumulation develop here, then we satisfy the pre halving retrace checkpoint that we see in these phases, and we satisfy a reaccumulation post halving phase as well, which is the third phase here. So at the moment, definitely we've satisfied, well, first of all, we've satisfied the pre halving rally. We've seen a fantastic pre halving rally take us to new all time highs. This pre halving retrace of 18% has occurred, could be over, but of course, this pre halving retrace exists to enable a sideways range a reaccumulation structure that sees us just consolidate for a long time, could it be the same case going forward right now? That's something that I'm watching for. Is it going to be continued reaccumulation and just sideways price action as we go into the halving? Because technically 28 days before the halving, is where we see a danger zone for pre-halving retraces. We've seen pre-halving retraces occur 28 days before the halving and also 14 days before the halving, like in 2020. But the fact that we're in this danger zone suggests to us that pre-halving retraces simply do occur. And this is what I was talking about in this tweet from two weeks ago. So we saw that pre-halving retrace take place, but technically we're still in this danger zone. So one can still argue that we could still see a bit of downside. And if we are to see a reaccumulation structure form here, then that downside could still occur in the form of just simple pulling back within this range, maybe some downside wicking, but never re equaling this 18% retrace. So there is a compelling argument for a sideways reaccumulation structure to occur. However, if we reclaim the old all-time high of 69K 
as a new support, then we're going to see this essentially occur. We're going to see that first wave into price discovery and price expansion to new all time highs as we've seen in the past. Is Bitcoin ready for that in the pre halving period? That remains to be seen. Is it reaccumulation or are we ready to turn this reaccumulation top into new support to break out into that price discovery? We'll soon find out. Stay tuned for new episodes going forward. Subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Like this video if you enjoy content like this going forward. I'm Rector Capital. Thank you so much for watching and I'll speak to you in the next one. Speak to you soon.